creatures of our God and King. Lift up your voices, let us sing. Hallelujah. That gently gleams. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Alleluia. 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 Let all things their creator bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. A blessed day to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers, we are grateful that we could bring this streamed mass to you as you sit in the comfort of your home. But even as you participate in this Mass, online as it is, know that our church doors have opened for in-person Indo worship. This Saturday, we did have an in-person Indo Mass at 4.30. And uh, on Friday, on Sunday morning, at 11 o'clock, we intend to have the next Mass. So come home to St. John Vianney. You are most welcome. We just can't wait to celebrate with you, to break bread with you. And to God, who is with us in good times and in bad, in health and in sickness, and through all these pandemic times, let us together give glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you Jesus 
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and the people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. It stretched out its branches to the sea, to the river it stretched out its shoots. 
the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it. The vine your right hand has planted. The son of man you have claimed for yourself. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. O Lord God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine forth and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there, are, if there is any ex excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace, will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew glory to you O Lord Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people here another parable there was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants and one they beat, another they killed, 
and a third they stoned again he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones but they treated them in the same way finally he said to his son he sent his son to them thinking they will respect my son but when the tenants saw the son they said to one another this is the heir come let's kill him and acquire his inheritance they seized him threw him out of the vineyard and killed him what will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes they answered him he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give them the produce at the proper time jesus said to them did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes therefore i say to you the kingdom of god will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit sisters and brothers the gospel of the lord praise, praise to you lord. lord jesus christ it was the year 1996 when together with another salesian friend i went to japan for a period of 3 months that was the first time i was stepping out of the country and so i was all excited new country new culture and knew nothing of the language then And so whenever we ventured out of the hotel for sightseeing or for other purposes we made sure that we took with us the address of the hotel and the phone number in case we got lost but one day as we were wandering around and it was time to get back to the hotel neither of us remembered the name of the hotel or the address but my friend who was smart had picked up a box of matches with the name of the hotel and the address and so as we stepped into a taxi a cab he showed it to the cab driver who looked at it and after much amusement and confusion the man seemed to brighten up he knew what we wanted and where we had to go and he took off at full steam and after an hour of journey imagine our surprise or shock he stopped in front of a building and pointed out to the building and turned around and looked at us all beaming and we looked out of the window and he had brought us not to the hotel but to the match factory my dear sisters and brothers have you ever felt this way you try to communicate and the other party just doesn't understand you try to speak slowly and steadily and with much clarity and yet they just don't get it well that is how jesus found himself teaching and preaching the scribes the elders and the pharisees sometimes wouldn't just get it and that happens in the gospel of the day 
Jesus is trying to tell them that God is the owner who owns it all and that we are all merely tenants who need to produce in due season and send it to the master. My dear sisters and brothers, I like this description of God that someone said. God is one who owns it all but possesses nothing. I thought that was beautiful, not just clever, and it is also a very relevant and significant description of God as one who owns it all but does not possess anything. He lets go. He lets us enjoy. But he does demand that we give the produce in due season. And so I ask you, do you take seriously this concept of stewardship of all that God has entrusted to you and to me? Do we take it seriously? And do we tend to it? Do we use it? Do we grow it? And do we return it manifold? That's what stewardship is about. Giving fruit, producing fruit in due season. There is that wonderful story of those two gentlemen from Mars who wanted to go around the earth and learn something about it. But since they didn't want to scare people, they disguised themselves, learned the culture, picked up the language, and they actually chose English and the American culture, and they were going around. And the first day went smoothly. They checked into a hotel, went around and enjoyed themselves. And nobody ever could know them for who they were, men from Mars. But at the end of the day, in order to celebrate this victory, they got into a bar and had a couple of drinks. And finally, when it was time for the check, they paid cash. And the bartender looks at them and says, you guys from, must be from all Mars. And these two guys look at each other and they turn to her and say, but how do you know? And she tells them, well, you are the first client to pay me all in cash and not use the card. You must be from Mars. Sisters and brothers, Jesus keeps telling us so clearly so repetitively, again and again, and yet we behave as though we are from Mars and we don't just understand what he is talking about. For example, this weekend we celebrate Respect for Life Sunday, a Sunday when we ask ourselves whether we cherish life, whether we preserve life, we promote life, and yet we seem to be stuck with our own notions, our own ideas. And so on this day, we need to ask ourselves this serious question, this basic question, and ask it in a very fundamental way, in a holy, holistic way. What does it mean to be pro-life? What does it mean for us Christians, for us Catholics, of this century to promote life, to be pro-life. We need to promote life from the womb to the tomb, from a person's birth or from the moment of conception to her or his natural death. And we need to do all we can to promote the life of the unborn, to save it, to avoid abortion. And that is a big part of being pro-life. And there are also other forms and ways of being pro-life, which we should not neglect. Jesus was pro-life. He spoke all the time about love, about life, about mercy, about forgiveness, about compassion. Is all that not pro-life? 
then how come we forget about the poor? How come we forget the refugee? How come sometimes we neglect the immigrant? And how is it that we take into our own hands as to decide who lives and who dies? And how is it that we lock away people for a lifetime and forget about them? And how is it that we can call ourselves to be pro-life, to be Roman Catholic, and yet send people to the gallows or to the electric chair? I wonder what Jesus would say. If only we can put ourselves into Jesus' place. If only we can step into his shoes. If only you and I can have his mind and heart and approach this aspect of pro-life. The Bible begins with this belief that all of us have been fashioned in the image and likeness of God. And that this is an unalienable right. Even our own preamble states that so clearly that all of us are created equal and are endowed by our creator some unalienable rights. And there you have those three of them, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And that is what actually gives us this broad framework. Not just our preamble, but the book of Genesis, that every individual is made in the image and likeness of God and bears in her, in him, the image and likeness of the only Son of God. And there is this inherent value, that dignity that flows from within, put there by the Creator. And so, that is not to be denied after birth or before birth. And if someone is born physically challenged or mentally challenged, or it does not even depend on what a person is able to do or not able to do, or for that matter, what he or she does. Irrespective of all this, there is a dignity, there is this respect that the Creator has bestowed on them. And that we need to revere and cherish. And so, as in John Vianney today, it's time that we told people and did something about it that we are pro-life, that we cherish, that we promote, that we preserve life from the womb to the tomb until their natural death. And we also promote the welfare of those around precisely because God has fashioned them in the image and likeness of his only son. And I believe that this is what it means to be pro-life. He does not diminish one thing and take away the right of the other. It's about promoting life in all its forms, not despising one or the other. It's not either or, it is this and that. That's what I believe it means to be pro-life as Jesus would have it. For at the end of the day, all that he taught is love. Love your neighbor as yourself. I wish he had stopped with that, but he would go on to say, love one another as I have loved you. And so, I cannot distinguish between one and the other, unborn and born, rich or poor, black or white, or yellow or brown, as it may go. I cannot distinguish between people who live on this side of the freeway or that side of the freeway, or in certain parts of the city, we need to love people as God would love us. And so, let us resolve as good stewards, stewards that are entrusted with this gift of life, to cherish life, to preserve life, and to promote life in all its forms, not neglecting the unborn, not neglecting the poor, not neglecting the immigrant, the incarcerated, the refugee, not neglecting anyone. For that, I believe, what it means to be pro-life. 
let's promote life let's be pro life our god is a god of the living and not of the dead and all he says to us is live be fruitful be multiply grow may god bless us in our endeavor to choose life and to cherish it to preserve it and to promote it let's rise and profess our faith i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of our body and life everlasting amen jesus taught us to call god our father and so with childlike confidence we bring our prayers and petitions to him as we say lord hear our prayer for the church that we may be a fruitful garden producing a harvest of rich justice compassion mercy and forgiveness we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer for our nation that public discourse discourse may focus on ideas and programs and that election speeches and materials will respect the dignity of each person we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for our parish community of st john vianney that we may not be satisfied with simply using religious words and gestures but rather make the gospel the source of all our words and deeds we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer. for all who experience anxiety or live with fear that the peace of god that surpasses all understanding may fill their minds hearts and we pray this to the lord we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer for all who have suffered rejection that god will heal their wounds fill them with hope and guide them in the acceptance of a community of faith we pray to the lord Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer for all who are recovering from natural disasters that God will give them the strength to face their challenges speed the assistance that they need and fill their hearts with peace we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for all of us that as we celebrate the respect for life weekend we will cherish promote and preserve life in all its forms we pray to the lord or hear our prayer for all those of our parish community who are sick including ann flag francis savendol francis barocchio mary and sams christine cass lynn mcmanus donna smith peggy van nocker Carla, Karen, and Carol Alvarez, Bob Mason, and Father Marvin Levin, the brother of Andy Levin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased members of our families here in our parish community, especially Eleanor Chesterman and Frank Steele, the mother and the husband of Carolyn Steele, Justin Tan, 
son of Alvin and Josephine, and Colleen Keating, wife of Richard and mother of Mary Alice, that the risen Lord will welcome them and bless them with eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those intentions we hold in the privacy of our hearts. And for all those that engage themselves in the work of promoting life from the womb to the tomb, that uh, their work will not be in vain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Cathy Green Montgomery, Nettie and Annie Thung, Raymond the Rock, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the special intentions of Anne Flack, that God may bless her with health, happiness, and peace of mind, and a quick and complete recovery from her illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The gospel of the day reminds us that God owns it all and we are just stewards. And as good stewards, let's produce fruits in due season and let us continue to support the building up of God's kingdom by bringing something to the table. May God bless your generosity. Lord, you search me and you know me when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. Behind me and before me, your hand is there to guide me. Too wonderful for me, this knowledge is beyond my reach. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it all before it has begun. I praise you, God, that I you God that I am fearfully wonderfully made I praise you God that I am fearfully wonderfully made I praise you God that I am fearfully wonderfully made in secret For my inmost being, my very self you knew, my bones were not hidden from you knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you, God, that I Pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours 
may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders, we pray, O Lord, that you accept the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to save us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us a savior to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis uncelit et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Mortem tuam annunciamus Domine, et tuam resurrectionem confitemur, nunc ned Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Kathy Green Montgomery, Nettie and Nanny Fung, and Raimundo Roque, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, especially on Anne Flagg, who prays for your blessings, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with St. John Vianney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's sum up our prayers and petitions in the words of Christ himself as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. On you stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As you engage in spiritual communion today, I would urge you to pray for this issue of pro-life, that we as a parish community, as a nation, and as a whole world, and the Church of God will promote life from the womb to the tomb, and also in all its various forms as we look around and feel the need for it.
bread for the immigrant, bread for the poor, bread for the hungry who beg at our door, food for the outcast waiting to belong. Come to the feast meant for everyone. sheltered bread for the rich those who need nothing but all Jesus is food for all people empty we are come come to the feast men for everyone As we conclude this Eucharist, let's pause for a while and commune with the Lord. And with closed eyes and open hearts, we attain that stillness of body and mind in order to engage with the Lord. And we pray that as God gives us the gift of life, we may be able to cherish it from the womb to the tomb, 
from the moment of conception to the death of the individual and that we will promote it in various ways and in its various forms. And so we pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, I thank you for your presence and for participation in this streamed Mass. May God bless you and may he reward you abundantly. And we pray that as our church doors have opened for in-person worship, the celebration will be held in a safe and healthy way. We urge you to exercise all caution because you are special. You have been wonderfully made and you are precious in the eyes of God and we need to cherish life and to promote it even in the midst of this pandemic. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, your faith in you. Make me a channel of your despair in life let me bring home where there is darkness only light and where there's sadness ever joy oh master grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love with all my soul make me a channel of your peace it is in pardoning that we are pardoned in giving of ourselves that we receive and in dying that we're born to eternal life.